I have two strikes against me, uh, being a woman and being a woman of color. During my training one time, I had an officer uh, who did not like how I looked, and I didn't look like the rest of my platoon, who was majority white males. I felt very isolated. It was definitely an experience that uh, made me somewhat depressed and devastated about whether I want to continue to serve. I had to fight to allow people to know this is who I am, these are the talents I could bring to the table. And because it's always questioned because of the fact that I'm a woman of color. a regular day uh, until I got a phone call from my father that there was a plane that went into one of the towers. I had family who was also um, down there working in that area in Seaport and also an aunt. My aunt was actually working in one of the towers and she was on the second floor but she was able to get out, thank God. But that alone just changed my life and motivated me to want to join the Army Reserves the following year. I served from 2002 all the way up to 2016 and worked on security cooperation as well as the counter ISIS mission uh, in Iraq, Kuwait, and Jordan. About 50% of, of my mission, I had to prove myself. About a year in, that's when they started to realize, okay, she has the talent to take on this mission. I didn't know as a woman, I, I'm not gonna really make a difference here, you know. I'm just a young lieutenant female. And then I realized that I, I underestimated my role there. I was first interested in national security going back to my mission in, uh, in Iraq. So when I returned home after all that, I've noticed that there's a big learning curve we're having here in the, um, in the United States. Not that many people know much about what we're doing or about national security. So I wanted to provide a voice to the people or to the American people to talk to them about national security. That's why I like teaching. We do have service members that we invested a lot of our taxpayers' money uh, to for, to serve there for many many years. You know, it does not does not make any sense to throw them out. So, it's be, especially based on discrimination, diversity is a big theme right now. However, I don't think when it comes to national security, they're there yet. But when it comes to civilians who want to learn about the veterans community who uh, want to talk with them on the media, they always think about those white alpha males, right? Yeah, and I was right there um, defending the president's travel ban. The wars that we've been fighting for 16 years, they're ongoing. Up until really 24 hours ago, the game plan with Syria was outsourced it to Russia. The face of it is always a white male, and people tend to forget about women vets, especially women of color vets. You are seeing once in a while some of color to talk about national security, but Again, it's still dominated by a monolithic community of older white males. So uh, we still have a long way to go when it comes to that. So it's an ongoing effort, but, uh, but the big thing is to make sure we have more visibility.